Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the X60. Yeah. So when it comes to the X series handhelds, that's like the low budget editions, but they are coming in all shapes and forms and different kind of let's say like different kind of form factors. Here you can see like the X60 comes in the 4, 8, 16, and 32 gigabyte and different colors. That seems to be they're sending me the yellow edition or sending me a basically purchasing myself. Oh, the box itself is kind of bust up. Here you can see like they are using old school decals, real tech. Who uses real tech nowadays? But then overall, like this is what you go to get most of the time. Like a lot of toilet paper manual manuals. And yeah, when it comes to specifications, it's always like a mixed combination. And uh, to be honest, it's always kind of dangerous in my opinion. Because sometimes they're saying you can play PlayStation 1, for example. But when you're going to do some testing, it doesn't work at all. And I find quite interesting with this manual, you can see like it has all the versions X8, X6, X7 and all the, it's kind of weird man, like this is like a universal toilet paper manual that we're going to get with this device, what the hell. So let's do a quick unboxing and let's see what we're going to get in this. Okay, like always, we're going to get a USB cable for charging and data transfer. So this thing comes with an old school mini USB, yep, they are still using it now. Oh boy, it's going to get some headphones with it and these headphones like are really rubbish, like really bad quality. I don't like them at all. I don't care why they are, why are they even bother giving it. So this is the handheld itself. I don't know which, what, what it is supposed to be like. It's not a Nintendo Switch Lite knockoff, play, PlayStation Portable or PS Vita. But I must say like, I do like the form factor. It feels quite comfortable already. Like when you're holding it, it comes with a very nice D-pad. So the steepad itself, I'm very pleased with it. It's like normally I always have like the four separate buttons, this time they don't have that. It comes with the slider joystick here at the left, like the PlayStation Portable. And here we have ABHY, two shoulder buttons, so in total six, that's more than enough for most retro games. Volume control, select start. At the top we can find the headphone jack, on and off switch, the input USB for charging, data transfer, I'm having a microphone, seriously. I'm very happy that they removed the crappy head, the, let's say the crappy cameras they're having like in the first edition of the X-Series. Oh, damn it, a mono speaker. And of course here is the TF slot. So let's take a close look what kind of car they're using. Dude, what the hell, I'm not getting... I can't, can't get it out. <laughs> and here we're having like the 8 gigabyte that comes with it. Problem zooming, yep. But it comes with an 8 gigabyte. This is like a brandless. I don't like these things, like really bad quality. So I don't know what kind of files are on it, but most of the time, if it's important, just back up it because, oh boy, these things can get corrupted over time. Okay, so let's weigh the handheld just to show you how light it is. It weighs 140 grams. So for the people who like, like very lightweighted devices, this is a very positive thing, but it's going to be like plastic fantastic all the way. With cheap handhelds, we're going to get cheap LCD displays. And that is what you're going to get also with the X60. They are like low resolution. Sometimes they are using like a little bit higher quality, but you can see like the view angles are not the best. But before people are going to complain about it, let's remove the freaking plastic. <sighs> So, but what you're going to get is most of the same stuff with these X-Series handhelds. For the people familiar to the channel, yep, this is what you're going to get, my friends. Like the same stuff all over again. They did change out some of the menus, like this is the old school PlayStation Vita knockoff menu. We've seen it with the X16, X90 and all the other devices. Thumbnails, the thumbnails are like freaking awful. Like they're connected sometimes with games, but if the files are corrupted, you're having like basically dead links that you can't remove. Over here we can record, calendar. Like, it seems like the bezel is covering part of the screen, by the way. Calculator, folders, game, nah, basically like all the same stuff that I've seen before. Let's go into the settings, display options, powering language, advanced, information. We can change out the key tune if you want to. So let's turn it off. <sighs> Much better. And then, then here we're going to get the information about the device itself. It's not the newest edition, it's a quite old one. I already noticed it with the menu. Yeah, all right. Let's go back and let's check out the games because that's the question. The question, what kind of stuff are we going to get with the games? 
Oh yeah, so they're going to get a fancy menu like we're having Super Famicom, Mega Drive, NES, MAME, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. It's possible to load up PlayStation 1 games, but I can tell you like they will maybe boot up, but they will not run at all. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get with the game, the menu and all side games. Let's test some games and let's see if they're still having the same issues. Mm, when it comes to the back menu and what I like about this, because let's say quick menu that we can have like quick load, quick save, but how are you entering this? This is quite interesting. Pressing volume, <laughs> minus and plus at the same time, it brings you back. So in the previous model they messed it up with shoulder buttons mapped to this, but it's quite interesting that they seem to be listening to it. So I'm wondering, are they watching my videos or something? Because no, they did fix a lot of issues. Okay, here we can change out the mapping of the buttons. Sound output, you can even change out the screen express ratio, but take consideration that it doesn't work at all because when you're choosing sometimes original size, you're going to get this tiny screen itself. So it's not working properly and they didn't fix it out, but just wanted to give you a quick look of all the stuff you can do. So let's quick, do a quick overview of what's on games, just see how good or how bad the emulation is today. Okay, so first up, Mega Drive. And what I've noticed is that when we're playing some of the games, First of all, the sound goes quite loud. But when you're listening closely to the music, you can hear like it stutters here and there. The performance itself is not very bad. I have seen some shitty emulation, but this is just okay. It's not perfect, but for the series of cheap series of X series of the handhelds, I'm surprised to be honest. The D-pad is very comfortable, so they nailed it with that. So there's definitely like a big sound difference between the emulators. Ow. So the analog stick seems to be working too. All the sound effects are here. So it seems to be that they didn't mess it up this time. Because NES there always seems to be messing this up. The question remains how good is the main part? Tickle generation like the old stuff will run just fine, but don't even bother trying to Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, stuff like that. Wow, the music goes super loud. Beefcake man is here. We're gonna mess you up now. Because of the good D pad, this game is just really amazing to enjoy on this device. Beefcake man, whooping your ass today. All right. You can see some screen tearing. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, I can hear it. Like, the music is all messed up. So, like, I'm doing these reviews for a couple of years now, and they still manage to mess up the Game Boy Advance part. You can hear it. Like, if you know this game, it sounds all messed up, man. No sound delay. Okay, so when it comes to the sound delay, they fixed that issue, but they're still having like a messed up background song. Such a bummer. How hard is to emulate a freaking Game Boy Advance? So if you can live with the sound effects and all the stuff that's going on, that is not like it should be. Besides that, for cheap handheld, it runs just okay. I personally really hate this game. I never enjoyed it. But that's of course more my personal opinion. Okay, and this is the reason I started the Super NES game, because you can hear like it drops frames like crazy sometimes. And that is like, like a little bummer and they didn't fix the issue. So take consideration that a lot of these games will not run just fine. 
All right, so let's take a closer look at the inside and just want to know what are we going to get. There is no information so far I know about the battery, so I'm guessing I need to get myself some prior tools because they are using four tiny parkers to lock the back plate. And now I need to get some prior tools to open it up. Most of the time I'm going to use it from the shoulder button so I can have some room so I can prior and open it up. Okay, I found this kit by the way on AliExpress if you're wondering. I just bought it myself. It's super convenient with all the kind of tiny screwdrivers I'm going to need. Ah, that's it. All right. Holy crap, there's a really tiny battery in this machine. Okay, so the, both the shoulder buttons are just loose inside the casing. Be very gentle. Can I remove the speaker? But the funny thing is like when you're looking at this, you can see like it has the option for a second speaker. Of course, there is no way to output it because <laughs> there are no holes of course in the second speaker room but you can see like the mold has the option for it i'm not going to remove the battery but i'm guessing this thing i need to guess around 2000 milliamps so this is not a big battery maybe a little bit more so and overall like the pcb is the pcb itself is specially made for this handheld and there's not a lot of space like left so there is no way of upgrading or doing anything else a little bit of bomb about the speaker we say yeah there's added a second speaker that would be a big improvement and overall audio experience but here you can see the one big uh, pcb for just everything like the controls everything is attached to it including here over here they sold on the joystick to it the slider joystick so if you're not to remove it you need to desolder and everything get a new part the battery same story the soldering itself is not bad at all but i would say like you need to be very careful with this i wish like they put both connections let's say a little bit farther from each other give it more room over here the speaker has been soldered on this position i wish they like use just a connector so we can just plug it out replace it with a different battery they even like added some extra cushions over here for giving it more pressure so it's not going to be getting loose and rambling the inside but i'm guessing if you want to do an let's say in soldering for a bigger battery for this option we still have some room left you can see over here like between the speaker and here we're having some room so we can fill it up maybe you need to be careful with the cf slot over here but there is an option there are options for basically getting some bigger batteries in here so it will like give you significant bigger play time now it will be like a couple of hours before you need to do a full charge but in the end, there is some room for improving the battery. What I don't get with these devices, why they are not getting, like, say, BL5C? And the reason why I'm seeing it less like the old school Nokia battery. In the past, we have seen it many times before. And having it in a compartment where you can switch out the batteries, super convenient. And you can get just some less spare batteries that can you, bring, that you can just bring with you. And now you need to do a lot of soldering if your battery goes dead. It's going to be a lot of mumbo jumbo for getting yourself a new battery soldering into the compartment. It's not a big of a deal, but you need to have some soldering knowledge and not to forget, you need to have a soldering station to do that. Or you need to find somebody who can replace your battery for you. So this is what you're going to get with most of these cheap devices. This is not the first time. I must say that I was surprised to see that we're going to get that kind of a tiny battery. Normally we're going to get three, maybe 4,000 milliamp. But I understand why they're doing it. It's like a cost effective thing because I know like most of these batteries are one of the expensive parts that they need to buy for an handheld like this. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get with the X60. I was surprised to see that it comes with a normal D-pad and it plays fantastic. I'm a big fan of the D-pad, I'm just going to be honest with you. So when it comes to emulation, it's the same that we have seen before. The X-Series handhelds always have like these weird kind of firmwares, so you cannot really update it. I don't know if there's anybody out there who fixing it, because if you can crack it open, you can upgrade it. So let's say similar with the Open Dingux, we have so much more potential, especially with this handheld. The LCD <laughs> display with my version, they messed it up, they didn't place it correctly, maybe I need to open up any let's put it this way i can maybe open it up in the future and just try to see if i can fix it but an overall didn't really bother me the display itself for a cheap device i did notice that it got an okay display in it not ips but it is more like better quality yeah guys so it's the same story all over again different packaging but slightly better here and there but thank you for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell become on the record family and i will see you in the next video